everyone and welcome back to the Pottery Corner, my studio down on the south coast of England near Chichester. Welcome back everyone. Um, today we're doing another glazed kiln fire opening. Um, as the students are back, the work is processed much quicker, so therefore there are a lot more kiln openings to do. So, um, Mungo, my rotor kiln, has been almost packed back to back. So um, in this kiln there are pieces of mine and also pieces of my students' work. Um, and the most exciting thing for me is on the last video, you'll have seen some mugs come out with um, a really lovely Amoco combination of snow, uh, blue lagoon, blue stone and blue midnight. And the glaze very nicely dropped itself almost down and off the pot. So I have actually Reglaze fired those in this kiln upside down um, a la John Le Potter um, and we'll see how they came out so it'll be really interesting to see whether that process worked so they're in the bottom of the kiln so stick with me if you'd like to see how they came out so this kiln has cooled today it's down to 38 degrees centigrade the ambient temperature in England at the moment is about 19 degrees, so it's a little bit above ambient temperature, but it's plenty cool enough for me to empty the kiln um, with uh, 38 degrees. I, I wouldn't open a kiln above 50 degrees centigrade, um, but at 38 we're okay to go. So I'm going to shut off the kiln supply, um, flick the switch, oh sneaky peek tiny one only small and only on the top layer obviously so here we go let us see what we have got um so these things are warm but only hand warm um so they're not uh, at all um hot so i'm okay to pick them up without my gloves on right first up this is a platter that's just stood on a stilt uh, a platter of sarah's this is beautiful done with a pastry made textured roller so the leaf pattern has been put on the slab before it's been cut out using our platter template and then placed over a bisque former so we do them upside down and they sit on the bisque former until they're dried to leather hard um, and then the students come and do the edges and isn't that beautiful that um, glaze is Oh, old favourite, Amoco's Rainforest. So Celadon Glaze Rainforest. Beautiful, shiny, glossy green. Works every time. You can't go wrong with it. So if you're looking for a green glaze, Amoco Rainforest is your friend. And uh, we had a conversation in the studio um, today about a bit like desert island discs. But if somebody told me that I could only have 10 glazes god forbid can you imagine oh it makes me have palpitations to think about it but if i could only have 10 glazes two of them would be amico's rainforest and amico's blue rutile because they are really good doers so an excellent glaze if you're starting off and thinking what shall i buy amico rainforest your friend so that's that one uh the next thing in this kill is a beautiful design by um, Carolyn, who is one of my long-term students, been coming for quite some time. And she'd made a template to make this beautiful fold-over um, platter, which is just gorgeous. So um, it's made from a square, um, and then obviously the um, part of the slab is folded over, and then we prop it up on a, on a mould, um, and then we basically take lots and lots of bits of sponges so that we can get these beautiful curves um, on each of the planes. And as you can see, that is a really beautiful dish and a stunning piece. Um, and then she pops a sort of a detail on uh, and the detail is done in palladium, which as you know, is a very drippy glaze. So two coats of palladium on there. On the reverse is um, our friend Rainforest again. And then on the front is two coats of Rainforest with two coats of seaweed over. So this is seaweed on here and it's beautifully, we actually put more seaweed actually on the sort of the triangles to get it to flow. 
uh, and, and that is really beautiful. That's a really beautiful dish. Now, Carolyn is coming tomorrow, so I know she'll be pleased to see that one safely through. So a lovely design um, to her and, and a lovely dish. Right, this is... Um, now, let me think. This is from the couple's throwing that I did with Steve and Linda. So Steve and Linda, your pieces are in the kiln. So this is Linda's first pot that she threw. So they came to a throwing course and there's a three, se three session throwing course. And again, information on my website I'll go into later. But this was the first piece that Linda managed to throw. Do you know what, for a beginner, a complete beginner, never touched clay before, how wonderful is that? Um, and that is in, a, in um, again, another old favourite, Amico's uh, Deep Sea. So that's a beautiful mid-colour blue and a lovely pot. So well, well done on your first throw for that particular pot. This one is her husband, Steve's, um, and this was his third um, go. So his third piece that he threw. And the glaze combination on there is Amico's Cobalt and Amico's Marigold on the inside. So again, that um, Amico's Cobalt is a Celadon glaze, so it's clear and glossy and a beautiful blue. So really nice. So that's again a good little pot. Let's just take the shelf out. I don't think it's very warm. No, it's not. So I can get that out. Gently, gently, take the shelf out. Right, okay. Let us see what we have in here. Props out, props. We don't like those, do we? Not a good idea to have props floating around in the kiln because if you knock them, they will damage things that are in your kiln. So get them out, get them out of the way. Uh, next up, so this again is the husband. This is Steve's. Uh, this is Steve's fourth piece that he flew that he threw, and on here we have Amico's June Bug, and I hope you can see in the light um, that you get this sort of crystal formation on June Bug. Um, quite nice, quite nice. Um, you know, difference in mottling if you like if that's what you want to call it but quite nice and a beautiful green um, and inside is amico's sage and interestingly as i've said before june bug must have a very high content of um cobalt oxide blue cobalt oxide because where this um piece has been glazed and the the june bug's been brought up to the rim um it has reacted with the sage in this in this way putting this blue rim so that's not a separate glaze that dark blue that's actually come from the june bug so june bug holds quite a lot of cobalt oxide but an interesting um an interesting finish that wasn't actually put on there so sometimes you get really nice happy accidents so actually that's a really nice little pot uh next is the this is Steve's fifth pot. This one's been done the other way around. So this time we've got Amico's Sage on the outside and Amico's June Bug on the inside. Now look at that. If you'd have tried to get that finish, I, I think you'd never get it. But what a beautiful surface. Um, I mean, it just looks, I know this doesn't sound very attractive, but it looks a bit like a speckled toad. Um, a beautiful, beautiful green um, and the crystal um, bits that are sort of coming on there has made this sort of speckled um, surface and actually there's, there is a texture to the surface. It's almost like a gunmetal um, finish to it. It's really pretty. So uh, I haven't used um, Amico's Junebug a lot, but actually that is, that is really pretty. So I'm doing some glazing upstairs at the moment. I think I might be changing my mind on my uh, choice of glaze because that is just gorgeous, really lovely. Um, so on the outside again, we've got the same Amico Sage. And again, on this rim where the two have just met, 
uh, we have this blue line, which actually I, I quite like that. That's worked quite well. So lovely, June bug, June, beautiful. Um, let's just get that prop out. Uh, this is another one of Steve's. And again, same combination. So that one is Amoco Cobalt and Amoco's uh, Marigold inside. Beautiful, beautiful. This one is Lynn's, the wife. Um, and this one is old favourite, what I was saying earlier, Amoco's Blue Rutal. There you are, Desert Island Glazes, Amoco's Blue Rutal, definitely one of mine. Isn't that nice? And it has such a lovely different colourway going on, um, actually, in that glaze. Beautiful. So that's really very pretty. So they came and, um, and did three sessions, as I say, and actually they did really well. So... I was pleased with the outcome. This one is uh, Amoco's um, Emerald Falls. I always get that wrong. I was trying to think of another name. And actually, could have done with probably a little bit more glaze on there. It's quite nice, but I think it's breaking away a little bit. So probably could have done with just a little bit more glaze. Where it's thicker, it's nice. It's a nicer green. Where it's not so thick, you have this sort of mossy colour, which, you know, I mean, it doesn't detract from the actual piece, um, but it would have been better to have had a little bit more glaze on there. So nice piece again. So they did very well, considering they've never touched clay before. It's amazing what you can do, isn't it? So uh, it's really nice to teach um, people who've never come before. Um, I've got a half shelf in there because there is a big piece in the bottom of here. <coughs> right, let's get props out. Nasty things. Nasty things. One, two. And um, I've already seen, just looking from this way, uh, the mugs that are upside down on stilts, which is, of course, a funny thing to see in your kiln because you're not used to firing things upside down. We shall see how they come out. I'm just going to lift out Sarah's wonky pots. So our lovely wonky pots, we love them. Um, so this one has been done with the pastry made um, roller. Again, this lovely leaf design. And pastry made rollers come from Poland. Um, so if you look them up, it's pastry made, M-A-D-E. Um, and they, they do textured rollers, very good. And they're the textured roller, they have a nice deep design on them. Some of the um, cookie rollers that you use, the design is not deep enough to use for clay, um, but the pastry made ones are really good, so I can recommend those. Um, and then she's used our Monster Relief uh, silicon mould, um, which is always a goodie, and then a couple of Monster Reliefs actually on the join line. Um, and the combination on here is uh, Old Favourite Rainforest, again, to match the platter. And inside is Amoco Fog. Oh, another Desert Island Glaze, Amoco's Fog. You see, I'd use up my 10 far too quickly. But uh, that's a lovely thing and goes very nicely with the platter. Okay, so Karen, the lovely Karen, who made the beautiful leaf that we unpacked in the last kiln opening video, um, which I know a lot of you have gone, ooh, um, it was actually, it was a castor oil leaf rather than a rhubarb leaf, but um, nonetheless, uh, a similar idea. Right, so she has made this most gorgeous, look at this, pine cone. Isn't that terrific? Look at it. So, craft crank clay, as you can see from underneath, this lovely biscuit stony colour. This can go outside in the garden all year round. Now, in England... We get temperatures no lower than minus 12 degrees centigrade or thereabouts. Um, so this can actually stay out in the garden all year round. And she's used copper oxide on the tips of the pine cone. And then she used some yellow glass. And um, as I've said many times before, <clears throat> if you're using glass for it with copper oxide, it will turn the glass green. And in fact, it has done that. If you can look from the top, she just popped a little piece of glass into each of these little pockets here. I hope you can see that. Um, but what a what a terrific thing. I mean, you know, that's just a beautiful piece to go in the garden. 
Really beautiful, Karen. I mean, she's so talented. I'm so lucky to have the students that I have because they make pieces like this. I mean, you know, it's just terrific to, to watch other people's creativity. So absolutely excellent, well done. So I'm sure she will be utterly delighted with that. And she's been waiting a little while to get it through the kiln. Okay, big moment. I'm actually a bit worried about these, so we shall see how they come out. So last um, glaze fire opening last week, um, I showed you the new glaze combination of, oh my, <laughs> of um, snow and blue lagoon, blue stone and blue midnight. And it literally slid off and dripped round the base of the mug. And I thought to myself, do you know what? If John the Potter can do it, hello John if you're watching, I bet you're not, um, but if you are, good to see you. Um, I thought to myself I would just refire them upside down, sorry I've just taken that out without showing you, so I've used a um, commercial uh, stilt and then I've put a kiln prop, so I've put a commercial stilt in the bottom of the mug put the kiln prop on the stilt and and refired it upside down. Okay, so um, inside the pot, I shall have to do just a tiny bit of dremeling where that stilt has been. You can probably just see the, the remains of the stilt in there. But wow, 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 look at that well. That was definitely, definitely worth doing and definitely worth doing without having any dremeling whatsoever to do on this base. It's now all of that glaze that was was dripped down has gone back up and rather spectacularly. I mean, it really, really, really is beautiful. I'm really pleased with that. That's worked really well. So that's a good tip if you have something that drips down. Let's see whether the other one is, is quite as successful. So um, again, the stilt is in there and I'll just take that out. And again, very minor dremeling in there to get rid of those stilt um, points. Um, it won't take more than a quick flick with the dremel to do that. And again, the base where it was dripped right the way down with a really thick layer of glaze on the base has gone. And indeed, if you look at the actual mug itself, you can see that the blue midnight that was originally on the bottom has actually come almost off the top here. So that's how much glaze was on there. But look at that. I mean, it's just beautiful. Really, really happy with that. And you may have lost a little bit of the capacity um, refiring, so you might be shrinking your mug a little bit more. But um, from going from a mug that probably couldn't be sold um, to this is uh, happy days, happy days. Very, very happy with those. Those are, I mean, look at them. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Anyway. That's all that we have in this kiln, so nice and short and sweet today. Um, um, as usual, thank you for commenting on my videos. It does mean a lot. and I have lots of regular viewers, <clears throat> far too many to name, but uh, there's Cher and there's Debbie and there's Mona and there's Helena and there's beautiful Monique from um, Bonaire, my favourite place. And there was somebody from Israel this week, so that's a new one, uh, a viewer from Israel. So thank you for watching. And Karen, and oh, there's just too many to um, Carolyn, Carolyn Pierce. Um, lots of you, thank you for taking the time to send me a little note and, uh, and a comment. So I do appreciate it. It's really great to hear from you. Um, as ever, course information on my website www.thepotterycorner.co.uk and um, there are items for sale in my Etsy shop um, and I'll put the, um, the Etsy shop on there and the link is also in the description below if you'd like to take a look. So thanks for watching as ever everybody and I'll see you on the next one. Stay safe and well. Bye for now.